here it is, the Zig Kit. And now a lot of people think this is a Fandango way of fishing, but it honestly isn't. Essentially, it's a marker float set up with a hook link on top, which enables you to fish the different depths and find exactly where the fish are. Now you've got a lead sliding on the line there, on the little boom. I've got a two ounce lead on there. I would try and get away with the smallest lead you can because you don't really want to be playing a fish with a lead on uh, with a zig that's smaller than that really. It will end up knocking the hook out. So fish something between two and three and a half ounce if you can, that should be about right. Um, you've got a little ball of foam on there just to make sure that it stays off the bottom uh, away from any rubbish so the float can slide through there nice and easy. Now above that, you've got the medium float, which is the smaller of the range and something I'd use up to probably 70 or 80 yards. If I'm fishing any further out and you've got more line out in the lake, then I'd use the slightly larger one. On top of there as well, you've got a little anti-tangle sleeve that comes with the kit itself. It just pushes the hook link away from the float and stops any tangles when you go to cast it. And on the top of the float there, you've got a three or four foot hook link of seven pound zig line. Now you don't need the hook link any longer than that really because you're using the float obviously to get the depth. So You've got that tied to a size six Kamakura wide gape. That might seem like a bit of a big hook for a zig, but I promise you it's not. Uh, a couple of my pals that, that fish zigs an awful lot use, use four and two. So uh, yeah, get away from them smaller hooks, definitely. Especially now the, the bigger ones are so sharp. And on the hair, you've got a 12 mil pineapple pop-up that's got some pineapple supreme and isotonic goo on there as well, just to make it super attractive. And it's extremely buoyant, that hook bait. You want it buoyant just so it's staying out there all night and it's not gonna start drifting down to the bottom halfway through. I've also put a tiny little bit of a kicker on the hook just to kick the line out at the right angle, just to make sure that hook flips and turns in the mouth as well when it gets there. So yes, there's a lot to it, but it's actually very simple when you get going with it. Mix and change with your hook baits, try some different depths, and you can't go wrong. To put together the adjustable zig kit, first attach a small lead onto the quick link and slide over the silicon tubing. Then place your main line through the ring above the foam ball. After that, you can thread the adjustable zig floats. Choose the medium for distances up to 60 to 70 yards and large for anything further than that. Then find the size 11 quick change swivel supplied with the kit and secure it onto the main line using a knot that you're confident in. Make sure the knot is fully tightened and doesn't break under tension. This can then be pulled into the rubber insert inside the zig float. Then take around three foot of zig line. Here I'm using seven pound, which is thinner in diameter and will usually get more bites, but I would go up to 11 pound zig line if it was weedy or snaggy. Create an overhand loop, which will hold the hook bait later down the line. Using a size six Kamakura, pass the material through the back of the eye and whip down the shank between 13 to 14 times. Then again, pass through the back of the eye. It's very important that you exit the eye on the point side of the hook. This helps it flip over and catch hold in the fish's mouth. If you do the opposite, you'll have the opposite effect and lose carp. Next, take a medium kicker and cut down a few millimeters. Thread it onto the hook link and pass it over the eye of the hook so it sits at 45 degrees when in water. Check it in the edge just to make sure it's sitting exactly right. It really is these small details that make a big difference. At the other end of the hook link, tie a figure of eight loop knot. This will be used to attach the rig to the quick chain swivel. As you're using extremely light hook links, this is the weakest part of the rig, so be extra diligent when tying this knot and ensure that it's tightened down absolutely perfectly. Once you've done that, thread on the anti-tangle sleeve that comes with a kit, clip the loop onto the quick link and push over the anti-tangle sleeve. Next, add your chosen hook bait. Here I'm using 12 mil pop-ups infused with pineapple and isotonic goo, which really is my favorite combination during early spring. A small but very, very important tip for fishing this method is grab a little bit of dissolvable rig foam like that, give it a nice old lick, and then slide your hook halfway down onto it just like that. And then what you're gonna do is, is stick the foam onto the side of the float. Now this won't look very aerodynamic, but it does cast okay. You'll still get it out of there 80, 90 yards. You need to hold it on there for 10 seconds or so. And then what you'll have is, is a little loop of line underneath, which is your hook link. Make sure there's no twist in that. 
If there is any twist, then simply grab the anti-tangle sleeve, spin it around so it's sitting like that, perfect underneath, and that will stop you getting tangles, I promise you. If you don't do it, you'll get tangles, so if you're gonna listen to anything, please listen to that. It's ready to go out, absolutely beautiful. When casting out an adjustable zig, make sure you still trap the line before it hits the water, fill the lead down and hit the bottom as normal, and slowly tighten up the lead before placing the rod on the rest. Ensure you're perfectly tightened to the lead without any bow to ensure complete accuracy. Then steadily pay out line until you see the hook bait reach the surface, followed by the float shortly after. Using a set of binoculars, you can precisely tighten the clutch until you see the float disappear under the surface, shortly followed by the hook bait. Then it's a simple case of pulling down a foot at a time until you reach your desired depth. The best thing about this method is, is when you put it out like that and you've seen it all go down, you know it's not tangled, and I've just seen two or three fish show right next to it. So I've got a rig out there that's absolutely perfect. I'm hoping it's at the right depth because I really feel like I'm gonna get one. Feels good.